Hi, welcome back. I'm Howard Lux. And I'm, I'm Jeff here. Berg. I'm sitting here with Jeffrey Berg. Uh, we're two orthopedists with 40 years of experience, and we're bringing that experience to you. Today we're going to focus on degenerative rotator cuff tears, or what I like to call rotator cuff disease. Why do you have a rotator cuff tear? Why did you wake up one day and your shoulder hurt and you didn't injure yourself? Jeff, what's our theory now on why rotator cuff tears occur in the majority of people? Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Howard. So this is always a tough discussion, and I've probably had it four times today. But, uh, you know, uh, these tendons start to degenerate as we get older. And so just like everything else, you you know, you and I both wear glasses at times. Yep. Um, Not a lot of hair on our head. Things start to wear out. Things start to degenerate. And the tendons start to tear. They don't have a very good blood supply. And they start to slowly break down. And you start to accumulate damage. And they tear. And a lot of these people, the older folks, they they often don't even know they have a tear. They have no symptoms. Right. That's the problem. That's exactly right. And it's amazing because people, unfortunately, and I guess it makes sense, they don't understand when they hear the word tear why they don't often need surgery. They can't imagine that if something is quote unquote torn, that it doesn't actually need to be fixed. Um, they don't understand that rotator cuff disease, it, you know, their rotator cuff is similar to their favorite pair of blue jeans, you know, where the front of their knee just wore out and they had a hole in it now. Uh, so it's not actually that the rotator cuff tore, it literally dissolved off the bone in most, in most circumstances. What do you tell these people the first time they're sitting there in your office and they have shoulder pain uh, with no known cause and an MRI shows a little tear? Yeah, this is one of the most difficult discussions I have. Because as you said, it, it, people can't wrap their head around it. So I try to tell them what, I, what we just talked about. The, the great percentage of people in their age group walk around every day with no symptoms and a tear. Don't even know they have. If we grab 100 of their friends off the, off the street and we MRI all of their shoulders and none of them have pain, half of them are going to have a rotator cuff they don't even know about. Right. So a lot of times these don't have to be fixed. And just like other people who have healthy shoulders and no rotator cuff tear get shoulder pain, they can get shoulder pain. And a lot of times we can treat this non-operatively. But it is, you're right, it's really, really tough for people to wrap their head around. The thing is torn. It's broken. Right. It takes a lot of talk. It takes a lot of teaching and conversation. Uh, you know, unfortunately, for many doctors, seeing a rotator cuff tear on an MRI is almost a license to operate because, you know, the patient will buy into it. You know, oh, I have a tear. I must, uh, it must follow that I need surgery. Yeah, I can tell you, and you probably know this, it would be easier for me to say to every one of those patients, you need surgery and operate on them than to talk them out of it. That's the toughest discussion is to try to explain to them, sit down and tell them why they may not need surgery and talk them out of it. I'll sometimes try to make the point really clear by explaining how much I like to do surgery right. and that I get paid to do surgery. Right. And I am trying to talk you out of surgery. There must be something to that. So, um, no, it's a very hard discussion. It just it, we have to be willing to sit down, educate them about uh, why they have a rotator cuff tear, and that it's it's simply a matter of wear and tear. Unfortunately, that aging word that we all hate to hear. Uh, and oftentimes, they're going to get better with an injection or physical therapy. You know, if you go through a few months of therapy and injections, and the pain persists, yes, then you always have to repair it. Agree. I agree. And, you know, sometimes well, I'll, I'll, I'll go further. And you and I know this. That if you operate on these rotator cuff tears, these degenerative rotator cuff tears, uh, you go back and MRI them a year later, an ultrasound, a good number of them haven't healed. And the patient's doing fine. Exactly. The reason they're doing fine is because you rested them after surgery in a sling. You got them into therapy. And you operate on them, but you really didn't do anything. It's all the other stuff. So you might as well do that without surgery. Agree completely. Now, understand, we're talking about, you know, these little degenerative rotator cuff tears that most 50, 60, and 70-year-olds and beyond have. Um, 
We're not talking about those of you who slipped and fell off a ladder and now you can't move your arm. That's a traumatic rotator cuff tear. That's a different story for a different day. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell trauma patients with traumatic rotator cuff tears, it, those typically, you have a traumatic rotator cuff tear, that's typically not going to do well without surgery. Completely different animal. Agreed. So there's your message for the day. Uh, if you're our age or, or more, uh, there's a strong chance you had a rotator cuff tear long before your shoulders started to hurt. Get into physical therapy, perhaps an injection, save yourself from an operation, and you're likely just going to do just fine. Take care. Bye-bye.